Hello everybody. Today I would like to talk to you about the GPT Win 3. And I will explain to you why this device is so good for DOS gaming. So, very fast disclaimer, I don't know where exactly you're coming from, whether you are familiar with the GPD Win 3 or the Exodus project, so I'm going to talk very quickly about all of these things. And in case you know about all of them and you're not interested in configuration, you can just jump ahead to the games that interest you. You will have the proper timestamps in the description. But first, let me tell you about the GPD Win 3. It is a Windows-based handheld device. And uh, it's rather powerful. It's got Core i7, 16 gigs of RAM, and uh, some proper GPU that actually let me complete God of War that was released this year. And uh, it's actually a very powerful machine. It is a bit on the heavy side, but for me, this is not to bother. It's definitely not a toy for little kids, uh, even though it might look like one. So, <clears throat> What's good about it is that it has got a proper keyboard here. Now, when I say proper keyboard, I do understand that it is sensor-based, but then again, you're not really going to play on it, probably. You are going to be using it for the menus. You are going to be using it for some uh, particular functions that are used quite rarely. Maybe you will be using it for uh, such things as entering the name of your characters in an RPG or maybe the name of the save game. And uh, let me tell you that I have been on a quest for the perfect handheld device probably since 2004. And as uh, soon as I learned about the PSP and, uh, you know, those dedicated gaming consoles, I really, really wanted to get something that would let me relieve the nostalgia of the old games, including the DOS games. So here we are. I think that this is actually the perfect device. The screen is not too big here. It's a 5.5 inch screen, which means that we will be able to play the games without any pixelation that you would get on a modern high resolution LCD screen. And uh, that I think is incredibly important. You will see how well these games actually look. I think this is much closer to what was intended by the developers than the situation we have got now. And uh, it's also good that we're getting about five to six hours on the low power settings here. So I will also talk about that. Now, a little bit about the Exodus project in case you don't know what it is. This is the project that has its aim of collecting every single DOS game ever released. And that, my friends, is not as simple as, for example, collecting all of console games, because uh, there is quite a lot of homebrew, there are a lot of games that were released only in particular regions, they were distributed in some very small circles, but trust me, you will find a lot of these things, you will find some weird freeware games, uh, you will find some obscure titles. I know that I found some title that I had been looking for for about it's fair to say 20 years, at least 20 years. And it is a kind of a breakout game. And it's only thanks to the filter here that I actually found it. And uh, here you can actually change the genre. Here, right, you can filter by the genre. So this is what I did. And I did found this, uh, I did find this particular game from 1996. So, um, Again, if it was released on DOS, most probably are going to find it, even the obscure titles. So how exactly this works? You just download this whole pack and uh, then you set it up, right? Uh, you extract all of the files and then you launch the file that is called LaunchBox. And uh, it's already prepared. I mean, you have got all of the games here already. And uh, then you can filter them, you can choose um, some kinds of uh, filters depending on the genre, the year, and so on and so forth. Here I removed quite a lot of uh, points because, again, it's not a very large screen. It has got 720p resolution. And uh, I'm currently interested in the title, release date, and uh, genre, and also last played. So I filter it by the time that I last played 
at the game and that's actually quite useful to me because let's face it you're not going to scroll down these things even though uh, we have got the keyboard you know inputting the title every time no it's not going to do that so <clears throat> once again you download this thing you run the setup i did that you wait for quite a long time because here they also extract the extras such as uh, magazines manuals and so on and so forth i actually had to sacrifice that i had to remove this from this particular installation uh, from this particular install on my computer and uh, it has got a one terabyte ssd and um, i can also insert the memory card here. I haven't done that yet. I do have a 256 gigabyte card, but that's not really necessary. Uh, let me show you my desktop. As you can see here, uh, we have got different indie games. Uh, we have got some games from my backlog. We have got some of the more recent stuff, such as Street Fighter V. Again, not super recent, but you do understand it's a game based on Unreal Engine 4, so it's not very old. And um, we have even got some random games from eTrio or just sometimes like to download games and uh, test some things by indie developers. And uh, once again, what's important is that I'm able to have this Exodus installation, which is about 550 gigabytes and uh, a lot of other games at the same time. So this really doesn't let me, you know, that doesn't force me to sacrifice a lot of things. So uh, how Exodus works, in case you don't know, is that you have got all of these games, but all of these games, until you run them, are zipped. And uh, once you press the game, once you click on it for the first time, so let's find something here. For example, one of the very first games I ever played, Superplex, right, from 1999. And this was a bad example because I had already run it, actually, it had already been installed. But okay, let's find something else. Uh, for instance, can we find Jazz Jack Rabbit? Okay, so let's find Jazz Jack Rabbit, CD ROM. And here it says that the game has not been installed. Would you like to install the game? And I say yes. And I say yes by clicking this. And actually, for that, I will show you how I did this using Joy to Key, how I mapped the buttons here for DOS gaming. And after that, it says, would you like to enable aspect correction? Let's press yes, otherwise you will get some stretched images. It's not going to be four by three. So definitely enable that. Full screen, of course, yes. And uh, changing graphics filter, no, we don't need that. And uh, as you can see, it also extracted the music in case it's available. It's not always available, but here the music track is available. This is the main menu theme. We haven't started playing the game yet, but we already have that. The sound on this thing is actually amazing. Let me show you the maximum volume. It's actually super loud, so you don't even need that. But there you go. So a couple of words, a couple of words about the setup here. So what did I need to do in order to optimize performance on this thing? And uh, how did I set up this uh, gamepad, right? Because again, normally you can even play like that. You don't even need to have the keyboard. So <clears throat> first of all, in case you're using GPD Win 3 for DOS gaming, the first thing you need to know is that there is this utility, which is called a GPD Assistant. And here in Auxiliary Tools, this is a bit counterintuitive, to be honest with you, you have got this thing called 3D Acceleration Patch. So it is important to close it because you can use it for different games. Again, it's just a compatibility thing. But it's very important not to press open, right? So after we pressed open, it's active, so you should play. You should press close, because if you don't, then your screen will be torn in half. If you launch these games full screen, if you launch them in windowed mode, it will be fine. But I actually did spend quite a lot of time figuring this out. So uh, this is for you uh, in case you have that, because it uses uh, Intel Iris, I think is the name of the GPU, and uh, it does have some compatibility issues and. They are quite well known, and fortunately, in this case, it is possible to fix that. So that's the first thing you absolutely must do. Second thing 
to optimize performance, you should run this TDP bat file. And uh, what this, this file does is that it lets you change the wattage of your system. And as you can see, we have got different presets. And by default, it is from 25 to 28 watts. To play God of War, I used the maximum setting, 35 watts. And um, if you do that, then of course it's going to drain the battery a little bit faster. And uh, you will see, you, you will actually be able to hear its powerful cooling system, its powerful fan that it's got. And uh, I can actually even demonstrate it to you in case you want to listen to it. But the good thing is that it's not going to be happening if we play DOS games on the minimum settings. And okay, let me just show you what I'm talking about. And okay, we've got this thing. Probably shouldn't have done that, but okay. Let's see. So as soon as I run it, it already started. You can already feel it. It's heating somewhat. And since it is heating, of course, it means that it's going to be using the active cooling system, the fans. And here it is. So, okay, here is Street Fighter. Really nothing special here. By the way, I forgot to mention that there are a couple of extra buttons right there on the back. And you can map them. Uh, in this particular case, it is mapped to Task Manager. So, we just... Close this task and uh, here's the system you see the fan is now going to stop it hasn't stopped completely but anyway what I want to say is that you can easily play these DOS games on the lowest setting on some of the lowest settings I don't actually use the very low setting which is 5 watt but I use 7 watt which is called media in this case but let me tell you that media is just as good as DOS gaming here. So, here it is. Closed it. And um, one last thing I want to demonstrate is, of course, Joy2Key. So, Joy2Key, uh, some of you might be familiar with this amazing utility. It was made by a Japanese developer. And uh, I did pay for it, actually. Not on this device. I just noticed that here I have installed the, but basically it's the default installation, right? And uh, here it says not registered, but I did play it. Um, I did use it quite a lot on my Surface. So my very first Windows handheld was Microsoft Surface with a huge gamepad, a Pega 9023 attached. And uh, it was actually quite a good device. And uh, then I have been experimenting with some other tablets and a lot of different stuff, but Currently, uh, we're actually dealing with some device which is properly made for gaming. So, once again, what this thing does is that it maps uh, different keys and uh, much more than that, actually. It actually can map mouse, it can have different modifiers, it can do different things to your gamepad. So, what I did here is that I created this profile. It's called DOS Arcade. I hope you can actually see it very well. I don't know whether it's focused properly. I think that it is. Okay. So, yes, it's called DOS Arcade. And uh, by Arcade, I just mean different action games. It works for 3D actions. It works for such things as uh, platformers. And, well, basically everything that is not strategy or RPG. Or a text game, of course. Text games we can definitely play on the keyboard. So... What does it do? Uh, here I have got these buttons, okay, the arrow keys on the left stick, which makes sense, I guess. The right stick is responsible for mouse. And, uh, you know, mouse was not used that much in uh, 3D shooters, for example. Uh, so it's mostly going to be used in DOS games for menus but also some other things. And 
as you will see, when it comes to mouse emulation, we cannot have touch emulation, sadly. So we cannot use touch as we would use uh, mouse. I mean, we, we cannot just do that as we would do it in native Windows applications, because here I can just touch the particular pixel and uh, it will move the mouse here. So that's sadly, again, not how it works in DOS. But again, more on this later. Next, we have got the D-pad. And uh, honestly, we don't really need this that much. Here we have got uh, WSAD, and uh, there is no real reason to have it because back then this was not the default setting. Again, in games like Doom, by default, you didn't have that. So it was a more of a later invention, so to say. But still, uh, and in many games, as you know very well, we can actually remap this. So one of the things that this device can be criticized for quite often is that it has got the D-pad under the stick. So it means it's actually very inconvenient for you to use both the stick and the D-pad. But then again, I will be honest with you, it's usually one of these things that are going to be used. So again, I have played quite a lot of games on this and I haven't seen any problems yet. Uh, so, okay, these are the sticks and the D-pad. After that, we have got our X, A, Y, B buttons. So. I decided to use the popular keys for that. We have got control key, we have got space, we have got alt, and we have got shift for these. And this usually covers me in different platformers and um, in uh, 3D shooters as well. Next, we have got these shoulder buttons. So this is going to be tab. And tab, as you know, is usually used for some kind of stats or a map or some other things just to see your inventory. And uh, this one is used for enter. So enter is used quite often, as you understand, for menu navigation. So I do use it a lot. Next, um, we have got the mouse. Don't forget about this in this setup. So for that, I have got triggers. Left trigger, left click, right trigger, right click. And in addition to that, we have got the very important thing that is escape button. So escape is going to be start. Again, makes sense because in many games that would bring up a menu or just ask you whether you want to quit. And I've just noticed that I haven't used select. It might be a good idea to use select as well. We can actually map it to something. So I don't even know what we should map it, map it to. Maybe we can map it to F. Why not, you know, as the central part? Okay, I haven't done this properly. I actually missed. So what I wanted to say is that I map it to escape again and select is going to be mapped to F. Here we go, now that's correct. And again, if you look at how many options this offers, look, here you can, of course, press the key here and uh, you can assign some special key codes. You can assign even auto repeat for what we call turbo button, you know, for you uh, NES uh, owners uh, or Rapid5 if you wish. Toggle between on and off. How many? You can even create some macros and look, you can even do that. And there are so many things. It basically lets you program the device as you wish. And here in mouse, you can um, change acceleration, speed, you can change how exactly these things work. You can even, and I will show you my mouse setup later on, you can even, um, for example, press a key and make this key accelerate your mouse input. This is what I actually did in my mouse setup. And uh, there are even advanced things, and you can just make your mouse jump to some particular part of the screen. This is amazing, really. And even for entry, so this definitely is an amazing utility. So anyway, this is our setup. And yeah, the last thing uh, that we have got is uh, R3 and L3. Uh, they are going to have a yes and no, so Y and N. 
Again, as you understand, in many games we have the possibility to redefine keys and it's actually usually safe to define some letter keys because they're not reserved, because it's not always that you can use such things as enter or space or control, for example, just for some basic in-game actions. So, with this setup, let me show you a couple of games that I have already played. I actually completed a couple of games already. Um, I've had this device for a month now. And um, uh, let's start with something simple, right? And again, one last thing I wanted to say, sorry for jumping from one idea to another, but there are again so many things to talk about. So I showed you this TDP utility, which lets you switch the voltage the wattage, it, again, I'm not very good at understanding these things in terms of engineering, so I'm sorry in advance if I uh, mess up the terminology here. But, okay, let's close Steam. And uh, yes, in case you're wondering, the screen is really, really small. And um, I mean, you can use scaling, and it was very tempting to do, but then I understood that if I did use scaling, it didn't really work well, because a lot of Windows... I mean, a lot of programs were not designed for this resolution, and uh, I, I just uh, got used to it, you know. I don't have perfect eyesight, but it's not too small, you know. And then again, you're not going to spend a lot of time here. Even though I did use this occasionally for work, uh, but of course this is not its main purpose. Anyway, enough talking about these things, let's get down to gaming, okay? And um, let me show you some, I would say, more recent titles, okay? One of such titles is going to be Rise to Resurrection. So, this is actually a sequel to Rise of the Robots. And uh, here in Exodus Project, as soon as you run the game, it very often offers you different options, and uh, you can play, for example, the game itself. Well, that's the obvious thing to do. Uh, sometimes you have the network options, sometimes you have got some extras, such as here, have got Director's Cut CD, and uh, these things are all mounted for you automatically. So, copyright protection is already off. That's number one. Number two, is that uh, you have got the image mounted, as I have said. So, and those of you who, you know, tried to do some DOS emulation, uh, probably know that these things can take some time and also the settings are proper. You don't need to set up your sound card. You don't need to set up uh, video uh, and you don't need to do anything really. So everything already works, it's perfect. Everything is mounted and the cycles are set to the proper number so that there is no screen tearing. And again, those of you who played some older games do know that playing an older game on a faster machine can be um, actually quite problematic. So here you don't have any of these inconveniences. So uh, here we just press 1 for Resurrection Rise 3. The reason why I decided to play this particular game first is that, um, you know, that fighting games are probably those games that require the fastest reaction. And uh, here I'm just going to show you how well it works. And <laughs> this is the theme that was made by Brian May from Queen. Can you imagine how cool it was? But still, a lot of people hated the game. Uh, the sequel is actually much better. It doesn't force you to play as this uh, dreaded cyborg robot. And they really tried, but still a lot of people don't like this game. For me, it's super nostalgic. I even made a um, uh, you know, text-based adventure game when I was 11 uh, in my notebook. And by notepad, I just mean... Uh, but by notebook, I just mean my paper school notebook, so yeah. Anyway, robots, uh, the 90s, you know, rock music, it's super nostalgic. So, here we go, they are pre-rendered as you can see, and uh, okay, currently I'm getting toasted by this guy, and okay, let me see where actually we have got the, the okay, here we go. This is the most powerful hit most powerful punch we've got. You can even do combos here, you can do a lot of other stuff and 
Okay, not perfect. Whoa! Okay, can we defeat him? I, I did beat this game, I promise, <laughs> on this particular device, just playing a different robot. And trust me, Rook is one of the most uh, powerful opponents. But okay, can we show anything else? I mean, in terms of combos and such. I certainly don't know any specials here. They are here, they do exist, but I, I don't know what I should press to do that, to actually use them. So, okay, we defeated him. Okay, enough of that. You get it, it works. <laughs> Uh, next, let's play something a bit more, I would say, famous, and, um, well, okay, the, the, you know, most important question, can it run Doom? Well, of course it can, but why not just try it? And here we go, here's Doom. Why did it choose Gravis Ultrasound? I do not know. Okay. So again, just showing that our setup here is perfect. Might as well close that. And uh, I can strafe using the Y button. I can run using the B button because that's shift. And space opens the doors, as you can see. And, uh, okay, where's the first enemy? I, I completely forgot how these things work on different levels of difficulty. And, um, yes, it does work. I mean, can it run Doom? Of course it can, because even my pocket PC... Yeah, this was one of the things I uh, really played quite a lot. And it's good that it could play natively, not really natively, I guess, but it could play uh, these uh, Windows games, and uh, I played quite a lot of them on my uh, Pocket PC back in uh, 2006. So, yes, here the controls are super convenient, everything is fast, and again, we get about five hours of gaming with this setup. Uh, and it, it depends on the brightness actually and I can imagine that if we close this launch box which is this utility that I showed you that contains all of these games if we close it I guess that we would get even more um, battery life actually uh, I'm not doing this because again this is just being a bit greasy and again, five hours, this is more than enough, for, even for the longest commute I can have. Uh, that's even, probably even better battery power than the phone if you play it, um, you know, if you play some games on it non-stop. So, there we go. Okay, so it can run Doom, no question about that. Uh, let's look at something else. Just want to show you some more things here. So, for example, uh, what about some of the older games? Okay, let's do something interesting. Some games from 1979. Okay. Can we actually play it? I did run it, I guess. Okay, these actually don't tell me anything. So... Let's just hope that my tennis works. We say yes, we install it. We enable aspect correction. Oh, wait, I actually mapped this button to F, so now we can actually press F for full screen like that, so that's neat. And okay, let's try to play my tennis. What an exciting name. It must run. New super biggest game. Uh, by my dear mother. By Dima Bush. Whoa, okay, fine, I see. That's interesting. The game by mother. I'm not entirely sure that this is the 
game that was made by his mom. I do not know, sadly. Okay, let's not trip on that. I did not mean to do this. So, okay, your name is Becker, move, key is 4862. Yeah, this is what I thought. Okay, is it just Pong? Is it just Pong? Uh, yep. Yeah. Okay, it is. No, it is 10 is alright. It's not necessarily Pong. Okay, 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 okay. No. Look, I'm actually using the arrow keys. Whoa, 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 I actually managed to... All right, all right, it works, it works. CGA graphics, never can confuse it with anything. You know, those four amazing colors, black, white, cyan, and magenta. You know, what can be more special? Maybe only that is that like Spectrum palette, which I actually enjoy, because this one I dread, like so many other people. But nevertheless, it does work. Look, just out of the box. Don't need to do anything. It's already installed. So the life, not really the lifespan, the proper word, I would say the range uh, of this DOS games collection is uh, the most recent game. I, I guess it would be somewhere from 98. If we exclude, you know, these indie games, Okay, here is just uh, unproper. Some of them can be, again, just indie games that we don't really know much about. So, just want to find something that is more or less well known. And in some of them, the dates are wrong. I actually checked it. But, okay, um, 96, 97. Okay, yeah, you actually do have um, Ignition. So, that's an interesting example of a 3D game. And when I say 3D, it's proper 3D. It's not just, um, you know, 2D game uh, with sprites. I mean, 3D game with sprites, right? So this is proper 3D. And uh, what I wanted to say about this game is that I remember this game very well because it was one of the games that supported 3D effects. So this is sadly where it's cut off because this, uh, as you understand, was the era when Windows 95 um, was becoming more popular and uh, the developers used uh, DirectX and um, uh, there were a lot of 3D games that supported those 3D acceleration and here it is not actually supported but it's still okay but I just want to show how it works okay it doesn't matter what we choose just look at the game here. Okay, so Ignition is actually... Whoa, 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 I forgot what it is. I forgot what the turbo button is. And as you can see, I'm quite terrible at this game. And it's not super convenient to play using the camera. I mean, I have to look through the viewfinder or just... Uh, tilt my head a little bit to look at it, it's not through the viewfinder. So yes, here it is, it does work as well. Can we look at a couple more games? Why not? And again, you saw how fast everything was, and in that time uh, everything was just uh, unzipped, and the games you can see here are always full versions, they are not uh, CD rips. Uh, and you have got everything, you have got CD music, uh, you have got all of this full motion video, and um, it, it is just perfect. So, yeah, maybe a couple more games, and uh, we'll call it a day. Uh, yeah, well, one more game I wanted to show you, Soccer Kid. Do you remember that? Probably not. Probably not, it's not the most popular game. Ever, but I do remember it well. So, as you can imagine, this game is about this soccer kid. It literally is the name of the main character. He has no name except for that. And uh, he's in his British city. And, uh, of course, he is dreaming about becoming a world-class player, football player or soccer, 
as they called it here in this game. And um, yes, it's uh, it's one of those cheesy games from the 90s, as you can imagine. And uh, it's actually super inconvenient, let me tell you, to have this ball as the projectile as your weapon. What you can do here is jump. Well, okay, this is not what I wanted to show. I wanted to show that you can press on jump on the ball and uh, let you get to the places above. And um, yeah, w one of the problems I have with these older platformers is that your field of view is actually small. And uh, what I just mean is that you don't have a huge view distance. So very often you will die just because you don't see the obstacles or the enemies. And uh, I don't know, of course it is taken into consideration, but okay, here it was too late to dodge the projectile, as I would say. Maybe not, but I don't know, maybe I'm just bad at playing games. So, yes, just one of those nostalgic games. And it does play very well. And as you can see here, again, I did not enable uh, aspect correction, so everything is correct, and uh, you can guess by looking at the ball, right? It is a proper ball, it is not an egg, right? Uh, and... <laughs> Uh, that's what I'm trying to say here, but the screen is straight. So there are different resolutions. There are a lot of things that you can uh, fiddle with. And of course, you can enter the config and uh, change everything if you want to. But there is really no need because it works just like that out of the box. And everything, of course, is saved. So your progress, your settings are saved. And uh, we've got no issues at all with those things. Uh, so one last thing before I finish this video, which is already too long, definitely. I just want to show you how you can play, but then again, it's not probably the best idea. Uh, some games that are not uh, such games as arcade, uh, platformer games, and, you know, fighting games, and so on. Uh, okay, well, one more thing I wanted to show before I show you the strategy game. I wanted to show you how pinball games work here. So, again, uh, one of my nostalgic games is, um, but first I must actually remember uh, what the name was. Yeah, it was Pinball Fantasies, I think, or Illusions. I, I always mix them up because the names are so similar. So, anyway, I don't want to change anything, I just want to launch the game. And here it is at the top now, because it's sorted by Last Blade. So again, doesn't matter whether I'm going to see this particular one or not. Okay, yeah, it is the one. So we can press F1 here. And again, there is no need to map this because F1 is one of the keys you're going to press only once. Right, so we press the function key here and one, and that'll be F1. Simple as that, right? Super nostalgic. Super nostalgic. I guess that something might be wrong. Something might be wrong here, my friends, but doesn't matter. I mean, the aspect ratio, don't know. Okay. Maybe I messed something up, but again, doesn't matter. Let's play. Whoa! Pinball is such an amazing genre. I absolutely love pinball in real life. And uh, pinball games on a computer, that's also nice. Played a lot of pinball effects. This was my very first pinball game. And uh, can you imagine the joy that I had when I actually played my very first physical pinball in 94? So, okay, it does work, you know, again, out of the box, didn't need to change anything. I probably should actually delete it and uh, reconfigure it. So, just pressing on configure here says uninstall, yes, you do uninstall, and then you will install again with new settings. There is a different way to do that, but it's just faster. So, anyway, what if you want to play a game with a uh, mouse?
okay a strategy game because again if you use touch it's not going to work because it needs to be programmed individually for every game it cannot be just emulated maybe there is a way but i'm absolutely sure that if it was easy they would have done it already so for example if you want to play a uh, scum vm game right such as by the way why not try to play a scum vm game so let's play monkey island right so that you understand what i'm trying to say here in case you don't uh, so the secret of monkey island it is yes we install the game we haven't downloaded it. How come? Well, okay, maybe we can actually demonstrate how that... I don't know how it happened. Um, all right. Okay, let's just say yes, download it. Error downloading. Let's download again. I guess. Yes. Yes. Error download. Okay, uh, apologize for that. I don't know why. Well, maybe because I didn't want to have it in the first place? Maybe? Because I didn't intend to play Scum VM games on this one. Instead, I use my Microsoft Surface. So, aspect correction, yes, full screen, no, of course. So the question is uh, whether we're going to use the DOS version here or the Scum VM. And I think, oh, okay, actually here you can choose. So if I choose Scum VM, and we can choose, well, of course I could choose Roland, but who actually had Roland back in those days? only some kinds of music enthusiasts and professionals, I don't know. And okay, yes, 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 all the puzzles, I want everything, so okay, this is what I do. And that's actually not what I wanted to show, I wanted to show how we use touch here. Well, 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 guy brush street wood, you do turn up in the strangest places. Uh, hi, Elaine. Uh, you okay, enough, enough. Yeah, the epic intro. Deep in the Caribbean, Scam Island. So I bust into the, the Well, there is not even the intro. Well, okay, my friends. I just want to show you how touch works. Sorry, it takes so much time. Okay, 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 okay. Enough, enough. So, yeah, as you can see. Again, da, 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 da. all right. So here I just um, use my finger. I just use touch. And here I, for example, press this, look at, and uh, we look at the door. No, we don't look at the door. We look at the woodsman. And okay, it does work as, as you can see. But it's not going to be the case in a DOS game. So here I have got this, as you can see, DOS mouse. So what it does is that here I set it to mouse 11 uh, on the left stick and mouse 7 on the right stick. So what it lets me do is have some precision. So in case I want to move it, you know, not super fast, but with an average speed, I will use the left stick in case I want to be... Uh, super accurate, super precise, I will use the right stick. And let's not forget that this is analog stick. So if I just press it like this, it's going to be super slow. If I press it a bit further, then it's going to be faster. So that's how it works. And here I have got the shoulder button assigned to acceleration. So look, like this, it's going to be accelerated. Here it says mouse adjust to 195. So okay, it's just going to triple the speed and uh, it's going to be very fast. And um, just as a proof of concept, again, it's not the device you're going to use for that. Probably it's not the best one, but it does work. And I'm going to show you with the glorious game that is Heroes of Might and Magic 2. Because obviously Heroes of Might and Magic 3 is the best game, as most people would agree. But they were released on Windows. And this was one of the reasons why I bought Microsoft Surface Pro 
in uh, 2013 and I did beat all of these games and expansions from Heroes 3 series. But okay, this is irrelevant, let's just show how it works. So yes, I'm going to use the Price of Loyalty expansion pack. And we could, of course, use CD audio, but it's not as nostalgic for me as the MIDI music. So I will use Sound Blaster here. Number one, music here is absolutely amazing. And I actually uh, was lucky enough to go to Paul Anthony's Romero, uh, Paul Anthony Romero's, I'm sorry, concert. And uh, he and his Orchestra played all of the music from Heroes 3, 5 and 2 and it was amazing really. So really easily one of the best or maybe, you know, hands down the best soundtrack ever. So here we go. Campaign mode, original campaign. And again, you can enjoy all of this MVV. And it doesn't look bad, look, because the pixelation is not really here. Back then there was no proper video compression, you know, uh, it was very early. And uh, of course the games were usually uh, trying to occupy the whole CD, which is 700 megabytes. And uh, they used the CD audio, they used FMVs, and uh, with this poor compression they didn't really have a lot of options, so resolution was pretty low, there were a lot of graphical artifacts, but as you can see here, it's actually very, very good. We don't see any pixelate, that's amazing. If you ask me, I will choose the good lord, not the bad lord. And here we go. So, okay, again, it is a proof of concept. Uh, we will just spend a couple of turns. Um, the question, is it too small? Is the text too small? I don't have the best eyesight ever, but uh, I actually can read these things. And at first I thought it was a bit on the smallish side after the bigger screens and, you know, after the high-res screens, these Ultra HD smartphones that we've got now. I was a little bit maybe even disappointed, but now I got used to it so much and definitely it's playable, it works very well. So, yeah, here we go. And okay. Let's see, let's listen to the epic music. Not epic just yet. <laughs> but okay, fine. Let's build it. And recruit all the boards. All things are really nice actually. Because the ranged units, in turn one. I mean level one, ranged units, always nice. And uh, Okay, this is going to be the main hero, and of course we must recruit the slave hero. But wait, we don't even have the tavern, how come? That's a pity, but okay. Uh, I just want to say that we need to have the slave hero who will just uh, explore and uh, collect different stuff for us, but okay. And how can you end the turn like this? Maybe it's a good idea to map E. Uh, to one of the bottles and uh, okay uh, of course always use experience at first and okay why not get the slave hero right now go here build tavern again this is just a proof of concept proof of concept and generous barky wait it didn't work like this Silly me, how silly I am. <laughs> I was using the, you know, Heroes 3 logic where you have to have a tavern to hire a hero, but it's already here. Yeah, that's a shame. Heroes 2 was the first game I played, but I did not play it that much. And to be honest, back then, I was pretty bad at uh, playing those games and uh, I didn't understand much. So, okay, transfer them. Maybe we can split them. Can we split them? Did this thing work in the, that series? No, maybe it didn't. Okay, I don't know how it's done. You can just dismiss that. Well, okay, fine. Um, can we do that? 
Whoa, 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 wait. That's not what I wanted to do. That's not what I wanted to do. What a shame. Okay, anyway, this is going to be the Borg hero. This is going to be the Halting hero. Just wanted to show you how we can use um, this setup in battle. So we're going to... Uh, okay, I, I hope I can win. No guarantee here. Why is this thing off? I want everything on. And auto spell casting looks a bit silly. Uh, so, oh no, we have this boring stone skin. Okay. No, I don't want auto combat. What will be a good strategy here? I don't know. I hope we win. Because this is level 2 unit and peasants are just trash. Well, okay, of course, we do win. And you know, after playing this, because I just installed it without much hope, and uh, after playing this a little bit on this device, I actually think that maybe, maybe, I will try to complete at least a couple of campaigns uh, on this device, because I don't really play much at home, and... Uh, this can be a good idea, why not? Oh, my boars perish, what a pity. Let's use some clever flanking here. Whoa, too bad. We suffer a bitter defeat. So, then again, I want to say that it is playable. It's uh, not optimal, but again, what I wanted to show you is that, look, I cannot just click somewhere. So, if we use touch, uh, it just moves the cursor in the direction uh, where, where you scroll so it, it works more like a trackball uh, rather than you know point and click mouse uh, yeah that just doesn't work so you have to use the uh, you know joystick as your mouse so there you have it um, in case you've got any questions in case uh, you maybe want to, me to test some other games not necessarily DOS games pretty much anything you are interested in. Let's enjoy this theme. It's actually a very fitting theme for the end of this video, for all of these um, nostalgia and marvelous things. Uh, just leave your message here, uh, <coughs> leave a comment here in case you want to know more about this device and how it plays different games, uh, different setups and so on. And again, link to uh, joy to key and uh, Exodus project are in the description. And uh, Let's see how much battery we have got. So this video was uh, already going for 50 minutes, even more than that. And look, we have got uh, 46%. So just like I told you, right, we started with uh, 64, I think, uh, percent, and uh, we didn't even deplete 20%. And uh, we started a lot of games and uh, the CPU power was used for, for example, decompressing. And again, if you close this and uh, if you minimize your uh, TDP, if you minimize the wattage to five, I'm sure it will be even better. So you can easily get five hours of this quality DOS gaming on this device. I'm just so happy to have it. So thank you for watching, if you managed to watch until the very end. And uh, I will see you around. Bye.